And Tony, that leads me to my next point that I'm going to cover after you're gone, but I want you to comment on this now. So we have this weird paradox. All these decades, they've said we're crazy. It doesn't exist. There's no Anglo-American slash Germanic, you know, uh, 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 elite with this, you know, uh, Israeli banking elite mixed in. None of this exists. It isn't real. Uh, you're crazy if you talk about it. And I, I know I just called you Charlie. I, I, I know it's Tony. I was thinking about Charlie and, and what happened to him. L let me start over. Uh, we have uh, 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 Tony Gosling. This paradox. They've denied there's this global elite. They've des they've denied there's this new world order. And now so many of these documents have been declassified. The globalists are out in the open saying, yes, the answer to the world crises is a new world order. You'll pay your taxes to private bankers. I mean, all of this is now being admitted. But then still you have the mainline media, even in the same publications, they'll admit there's a global new world order and define it just as we've defined it but then have a separate article in the New York Times saying it doesn't exist and we're insane. And so it's really kind of like a train wreck to watch them not getting their propaganda lined up. Yeah. I mean, you see the point I'm making? They're, they're yeah. denying something which they have to now admit. Well, listen, this is a, m a massive uh, catch-up is called for here right across the Western English-speaking, particularly media. I mean, we, you know, there's what, there is a, a kind of uh, two-pronged problem in that. One is that you do have censorship, certainly uh, places like Reuters, as Charlie showed, you know, you type Bilderberg into Reuters and nothing comes up whatsoever. You know, so you've got some sort of censorship. And I know for a fact I've seen Bilderberg articles on the Reuters system, you know, so they've obviously hidden these articles. They've, got they've the removed them. Yeah, yeah, they've yeah. removed them. Mm -hmm. But there's also quite genuine ignorance. I mean, I, when I speak to journalists about Bilderberg, and I'm sort of known in the UK amongst other journos as a place to come to talk to Bilderberg about Bilderberg, uh, there's, there's, there's only two different reactions. One is looking at me as if I'm slightly crazy, and the other one, or else, you know, or else good you know so there's a there's a knowledge there so they're either or, or they're either for it or against it or whatever there's a very much a knowledge but most journalists actually haven't heard about this so we're talking about ordinary journos who are working on other stories such as you know sports and all that sort of thing they're just not and, and news journalists or domestic stuff it's not in the the consciousness of journalists and, and this is what we're seeing is the sort of problems as it as as they're coming out of the closet. Because, of course, as you said rightly, for years and years they've been denying it. And now, all of a sudden, we're hearing all this, oh, we need a global solution, we need a global solution, we need a global solution. So what's happening is, I think, what well, certainly the journalists that I talk to, is they're slowly realizing, wow, this is, uh, m this is massive, and it's been brewing under the surface for years. And, of course, the trust that Bilderberg have constantly insisted on uh, is now uh, sort of a trust which is rotting on the shelf. Uh, because many editors who've trusted the Bilderberg line along the years, which is always just a little private meeting, are now thinking to themselves, well, hang on a minute, we trusted you, and you've completely screwed up from top to bottom. Well, that was my next point, is that this is a huge loss of trust uh, happening as the mainstream media invested itself, making fun of us and saying, Limbaugh used to say the CFR didn't exist. Now it's all over TV pushing open world government as the solution, you know, to all problems. Uh, denying Bilderberg, denying North American Union, denying NAFTA superhighways as they're being built and the billboards are up. You know, because they've done this and because the media itself uh, a lot of the time was actually just ignorant, as you were saying, and their editors were lying to them. Oh, don't do a story on that. That's just schizophrenic crazies who believe in space aliens. Th that whole line is now imploding, and so the media is losing that much more credibility, and then they're trying to play catch-up, and that only exposes the fact they covered this up that much more. Well, this is the Guardian's line, isn't it? And it's, I think what they've done here is they've been mulling this over for years. A lot of Guardian people, you know, have been looking at this thinking, hang on a minute, this is a sort of fascist conspiracy against uh, Britain, and is this something we should take seriously and deal with? And it seems to me at last they bit the bullet and grasped the nettle and they've decided, look, we want, we are going to actually fund and send a reporter there to, to get the gen. I mean, the Guardian is, is really shining at the moment. I don't know if you've been following all this, this massive MPs expenses scandal here in Britain, have you? Yeah, and they're also doing reports about the U.S. government torturing children and they're doing stories about the government being corrupt and Big Brother and they're, and they're doing stories about staged terror attacks. And I think it's a crisis of conscience there at the Guardian. I think they also understand we're the future. 
alternative media, telling it like it is, you know, laying the cards down on the table. I, I think they want to survive into the future. And people like the New York Times that are still basically saying none of this exists, that's why they're going bankrupt right now. Uh, Tony Gosling of Bilderberg.org, I really appreciate you coming on the show, and we'll uh, talk to you. One, one, one little last thing, Alex, because this week the Guardian has exposed that the, the scandal here in the U.K., um, is this, this, this stolen, a hard drive was stolen from the House of Commons with all these MPs' expenses on it. It was actually stolen, apparently, by this ex-SAS major who has links to, obviously, to the MI5 and MI6, um, who is called John Wick, uh, and it's actually been stolen by an ex-SAS guy. So this is private security, quite possibly working with, and almost certainly working with, MI6, attempting to ferment a political crisis. I think this is fascinating, and it's nice to see that there's still some decent investigative journalism out there. Now, let me stop you. I have to be honest. I get so busy that I had read about all the news headlines on Drudge about how they were going after members of Parliament for buying $200 dinners or getting a little bit of rent money or something. And I said, I believe this is a political distraction uh, I said this first hour, start of the show. I said, well, I believe this is a political well, distraction because they always love to use petty things to get control of Parliament. The MI5, MI6 has admittedly been spying illegally on Parliament. You have the shadow, illegitimate Queen's government trying to control the Parliament to do these unpopular things. You're saying, I didn't know this, you're saying they've caught intelligence people stealing it to use it uh, as dirt on them. So, yeah, I, go ahead. Yeah, so this guy yeah, is John is John Wick. I mean, this is private security companies. Obviously, when people re retire from special forces, they set up often these like little uh, uh, kind of uh, private investigator style agent agencies. And you know, why is this guy John Wick not on the, on the headlines instead of the MPs? I mean, clearly, what's going on here is that the MPs are being dirtied up in rather a tacky fashion uh, in order to distract attention from the billions and trillions that the bankers have run off with. And, of course, MPs are our representatives. They're the front line against the bankers. And they're the ones who have been di being dirtied up here. And, and I think, you know, the, the implication here is that the security services, either MI5, MI6, somebody like that, is, is also working with this guy. But, you know, what are private intelligence agencies Well, they always, they, the always use, they always use visor consultancy to run the drills, you know, with the former head PR guy from Scotland Yard. He runs the drills at the exact same time, exact same places as the bus and the trains are bombed on the morning of 7-7 at the exact same time. It's always private intelligence agencies, quote, you're going to start a private group and then that's the public payoff they can then make because it's just a private group doing security and the government's giving you a paycheck. But instead of making 60,000 pounds a year, you're now making 150,000 pounds a year. Uh, you know, to carry these operations out. So my instincts were right about that. Tony, I'm glad we talked to you uh, from the U.K. Uh, along that line. Uh, but absolutely, any time I see a report about a politician that's got a crooked toenail, while meanwhile massive crimes are going on, we know what it is. A, a, another parallel uh, example of this is they took almost all the IRS agents off of billionaires uh, 10 years ago and put them not just on middle class, People make $100,000 a year. They put it on blue-collar people who literally might just owe a few thousand dollars. And so not only did they cut the amount of agents, they put the investigators on the very poorest, which, of course, would bring back the least amount of money, and, and, and cut all the white-collar investigators across the government. So, I mean, I mean, you really see it, how they go after some poor auto mechanic who can't even, you know, pay his trailer bill, but some billionaire can openly steal everything. Yeah, I mean, it's been a really good week, actually, for investigative journalism here, and it's lovely to see, because we've been living through a crisis of investigative journalism with all these uh, newspapers, TV stations, radio stations, etc., cutting, cutting, cutting all of their journalistic budgets. Uh, another story that's come out this week, uh, just, you know, stop me if you've already been over this, Alex, but it's uh, it's five... Muslim community workers here in Britain um, have accused MI5 of waging a campaign of blackmail and harassment in an attempt to recruit them as informants. So, you know, basically what they're saying is MI5 are, co are going to these uh, Muslim community workers and saying, either work for us or we're going to say you're a terrorist. We're going to put you on the list. We're going to follow you and possibly arrest you too. Yeah, we're going to send you to Guantanamo Bay. I did see that, and, and Bob Chapman covered it last hour, but, we, I mean, we could talk for days about it. It's so yeah, important. Okay. 
All right, but Tony think, Gosling. You know, yeah, I'm just making the point, really, that, uh, you know, investigative journalism seems to uh, be, almost have kind of got a bit of a revival. The last couple of weeks, I've seen some fantastic stuff around, out there, and I think we'll be seeing more in the future. Absolutely. I mean, the corruption's right out in the open. If we all just stand up together, we can overthrow this thing very quickly. Tony, or I could call you Charlie, thanks for joining us. The good old folks at New Silver Solution. And the website is supernaturalsilver.com. Supernaturalsilver.com. Uh, this is something that kills bacteria, viruses, you name it. Well documented. They've got it down to a super small nano-sized particle. Supernaturalsilver.com. Check them out at infowars.com. Supernaturalsilver.